Now retired, Henry Chamber served in key positions including as minister and principal private secretary to former president of Uganda, Idi Amin Dada. In 1977, Amin, who declared himself field marshal and conqueror of the British Empire, ordered the killing of then Archbishop of Uganda, Janan Luom. Janan Luom was killed together with two cabinet ministers, both of Fumbi and Ojema, former Inspector General of Police. They are killed in circumstances that were very clear that it was an organized crime by the executive. At the time, Chamber was the Minister of Health and knew of the killing of many prominent people then. But Archbishop Lumu's murder was a shocker and left him thinking twice about serving in President Amini's cabinet. Earlier, Chamber's mother had advised him to flee. He had hesitated, but now had to take a tough decision. Would the minister just disappear and leave a big family behind? He waited for an opportunity and it came fast. President Amin sent him for an assignment in Geneva, Switzerland. So I had a good reason to go, and I did travel to Geneva, uh, knowing full of well that I will, I will not be coming back. Uh, but as soon as I went, rumor started going round that I was uh, not coming back. And I mean, I mean stupidly, decided to take over this house and uh, arrested the mother to talk her to the Gaddafi barracks. That trip also provided a golden opportunity for his wife and children to leave the country. After pretending that she was staying, they took them across the border into Kenya. And as soon as they were, they crossed into Kenya with my children, I decided to fly to the UK and leave the from Geneva. Chamber's family later joined him for a new life in London, UK. In London, he was interviewed by various newspapers and appeared on TV stations where he spoke against Amini's atrocities in Uganda. He also used the time in exile to write a book entitled The State of Blood in Uganda. Amin could use the gun but he couldn't use the pen for, for what I had to say. In the book, he explains how Ugandan suffered under Amini's regime. Many were tortured, killed and imprisoned for no crimes. Because I wanted people to know that uh, much as I had been here for a long time, during Amin's time, I had no con collusion with Amin on any atrocities. Chamba's brother was among those killed. <laughs> Whether it was by Amin or he knew about it or he didn't know, I don't know. But he was picked up from his office uh, across the river here at Nyanza Textiles and never to be seen again. Now 82 years old, Henry Chamber also served as principal private secretary in President Milton Obote's government. After Amini's takeover, Chamber served in a similar position and as secretary to cabinet and head of civil service. He was later appointed Minister for Culture and Community Development. After one year, Amin appointed him as Minister for Health in 1973, where he served until 1977. He fled to exile while serving as Health Minister. He returned from exile in the 1980s and served in President Yoweri Museveni's government as State Minister for Animal Industry from 1989 to 1991. From 1991 to 1994, he was State Minister for Agriculture. He then moved to the presidency, where he served as minister from 1994 to 1996. As one of the delegates to the Constituent Assembly that wrote the 1995 Constitution, Henry Chamber was against the moves to lift the presidential age limit from the Constitution. Some of us had to leave, run, and into exile for for committing no crime, 
we want a situation that will make every Ugandan comfortable in his country and no need to go into exile. And have the humiliation that you have to be a refugee. We must make everything that will make Uganda more attractive to its citizens so that, uh, Agnes, you don't have to uh, look for the best, uh, earliest opportunity to run away from your country. It is a humiliation. And that's why I'm, I would insist as an elder citizen that we should be careful when we are ad addressing issues that will make Uganda less attractive. In Chambers' compound stands a tree which he planted when he returned from exile after Amin was ousted in April 1979. The Rotarian holds a master's degree in history from a university in London. His house has a lot of photos capturing the moments of his life. He is now serving as a member of the Elders Forum of Uganda. Agnes Nandutu, NTV, Living History.